my wall you're riding on. I didn't hurt it any. You're defacing the wall. Look, man, it's already written on. Why pick on me? I know you. Now, either I call the police or you clean the whole wall. By definition, graffiti simply means writing or pictures scratched or inscribed on a surface. The term was first applied to the ancient drawings found on the walls of caves. In any event, graffiti is as old as civilization. Some of it is highly prized as a reflection of the culture from which it came. Even our founding fathers indulged in graffiti. George Washington's initials can still be seen on the rocks at Natural Bridge. Recently, some have labeled graffiti art. And indeed, it can be attractive, amusing, and interesting. Often, graffiti is encouraged as decoration on certain walls, fences, and sidewalks. It has even inspired art and literature. On the other hand, by almost any standards, much graffiti is ugly. Some of it distasteful, and a little of it offensive. One needs only to visit any major city to realize that the advent of spray can enamel and magic marker pens have given rise to a new look to America which delights some and disturbs many. Young people must decide, is graffiti fun or is it dumb? The most famous and perhaps the most controversial graffiti is that blanketing the New York City subway system. One view is that subway graffiti, too, is a kind of art and worthy of praise. It certainly does change the appearance of an often drab setting. Yet, graffiti here is a definite safety hazard and needless expense. The cost to the New York subway system alone exceeds $2 million per year. The expense is borne through higher prices. Apart from the cost are the risks of being caught and the danger of injury. A number of would-be artists have been hurt by subway cars and electric shock. Nationally, schools are frequent targets of graffiti. Although seen in virtually every area, it seems to be most concentrated in the inner cities and older neighborhoods. One reason it is not often found in the suburbs is that it is quickly removed when it appears. No one knows how much is spent totally on the correction of graffiti but it is estimated that in schools alone, the cost runs into tens of millions of dollars. Until a few years ago, graffiti was limited primarily to alleys, vacant buildings, and fences. Today, it appears almost everywhere. Not even works of art are spared. Nor is the natural environment immune. Graffiti is everywhere. I think graffiti is neat. It's our way to communicate. Graffiti is sneaky. Done when people think nobody is watching. I can't see the fun or honesty in that. Besides, what they write is neither art nor literature. Some forms of graffiti may be highly destructive. Ten years ago, such damage to works of art was rare. Now, it is common worldwide. And the hate graffiti once despised here, but seen in other countries, now appears too often in America. 
Many of our historic sites and national treasures have been affected. The defacement of public property has been termed a national disgrace. A good question at this point is, why do people do it? The motivations for graffiti are many. Love, bravado, or even humor. But the motivations are not always so innocent. Graffiti may be hateful, insightful, or radical. Some experts say that graffiti is one way adolescents have to express their identities. They say this isn't really any different than putting titles on doors of offices or monograms on things that we own. Perhaps some of it is an attempt to be unique. However, another strong reason for graffiti seems to be peer pressure. In other words, some of it's done to show the other kids you're not afraid to do it or merely to show how many times you can do it, or if you can put it on inaccessible places. But in still other cases, graffiti is used as a way to mark the territory or communicate in street language. Other graffiti rises out of anger, resentment, and psychological disturbance. In any event, it reveals a great deal about the artist's personality. The school board and the principal have approved your request to decorate the school walls, providing you submit your plans to the students for a referendum vote. So what do you want to do? Well, if they really mean it, why don't we go mod? What do you mean by mod? You know, Dangler colors, wild designs, graffiti, anything that we want. Why graffiti? Because it's groovy, it's where it's at. That's not where it's at with me. I see graffiti in my neighborhood all the time, and I don't like it. If you want that kind of junk, you take it to your own neighborhood. What kind of wall do you want? I like murals, black art, pretty things, not profanity. It seems we're not in agreement. There's this about graffiti. It often starts a debate. Obviously, graffiti is a lot of different things, and it certainly can be a problem. There are many approaches to solving it. To combat the epidemic of graffiti on subway trains, some cities have begun to buy them already decorated. It is also used on buildings and fences. This idea of imitation graffiti, sometimes called walls of pride, is executed by artists. Some experts say this encourages rather than discourages more graffiti where it isn't wanted. Others have tried to control graffiti by allowing it to be applied in specific places. Many think that this is a good answer, but others say graffiti is only satisfying if you have to write and run. Schools have met the problem in a number of ways, everything from security guards to poster campaigns. Some schools require parents to pay for the damages. Others have attempted to solve the problem by architectural means or use of materials which are easily cleaned. I think the punishment should fit the crime and those who create the graffiti should be required to clean it up. I think the answer comes from pride because if you're proud of your school you ask others not to deface it. Kids who write on toilet walls have psychological problems. Let's help them straighten out their heads. I believe we should attack the problem and not the symptom. We should give the kids a chance to establish a territory or reinforce their identity. We should give them the responsibility to clean up a block in their neighborhood, or to plant a tree, or to paint a useful sign. And whatever they do, it should bear their names proudly. A lot of kids get themselves over a graffiti phase by doing something instead of. One day, they decide that it's more fun to use their talents where they'll be appreciated. It's not that drawing on a wall somewhere is always such a bad thing, but it's not really a good thing either. The point is that you can get pretty much the same kick and better recognition in other ways. The solution to the problem of graffiti, then, seems to lie within each of us. 